Hey everyone, welcome to our next step in making wine with the Vino Italiano wine kits, the Tuscany Rosso Magnifico kit found on Amazon. Okay, we're going to get started. This part is the degassing and um, stabilizing portion of the wine kit experience. If you've missed the previous parts, refer to my earlier videos. All right, we're back with our Tuscany Rosso Magnifico Vino Italiano kit. And today we're going to do our transfer again from this carboy to that carboy down there. Okay. First thing we're going to do is remove some of the wine using this wine thief that we have here. And removing some wine. In a second we're going to put our hydrometer in there and take a look at what we got as far as a reading. I'll be right back. All right you can see it might be hard to see on this video but it's hydrometer is pretty low uh, in the testing over here so we're done with the fermentation at this point. So I'm going to transfer this wine real quick to the other carboy and we'll take it from there. So, here's my auto siphon and the carboy I'm going to be transferring from. One of the things you're going to notice is that I put a cloth under the end of this carboy. This is to tilt the carboy uh, so that we get as much wine out of it as possible. Now I've cleaned and sanitized my siphon, my auto siphon, and this jug down here. One other thing that's also important to do is to put the tip, I have a tip right here, that I'm going to put on the end of this auto siphon. This way we don't pick up any sediment along the way. So I'm going to get that going and I'll be right back. Alright, now I got the tip on and I'm going to push this down into the carboy. And I'm pushing it so that the tip is facing the back of the carboy because that's where we're tilting back to so we get um, the tip at the lowest part of the carboy and now I'm going to try to do this so you can see I'm going to auto siphon the wine out and the wine now is transferring out from one jug into the second jug. One carboy into the second carboy. In doing this is going to release some of the gas and the directions actually say <coughs> to take the hose and dip it on the side of the carboy so that as much gas comes out as possible. Now some people might say that might introduce too much oxygen into into the uh, wine. Um, I a lot of times do this because sometimes getting gas out of it is is a bit of a pain. And I don't know if you can see the carboy up here, how there is a layer of sediment down here at the bottom part. I'm going to try to leave that layer behind as we're doing the siphoning. Alright. So at this point this wine is very dry, that's the way I like red Italian wine. And we are siphoning out from one jug to the other, one carboy to the other. Another thing I want to siphon that I think is a very important thing is this little clip right here. Because what it can do, the clip, is when you pinch it, it stops the flow of the siphon and it gives you a uh, more control over the speed of the stuff coming out of the siphon and um, allow you to shut it off without breaking the siphon. Alright. So you see it's a pretty quick process. It didn't take that long to transfer the wine from one jug to the other. The other thing that we're going to leave behind, not only the sediment, 
But remember those oak chips we put into this carboy, into the top one? We're going to leave those behind in the uh, top one. And you'll see, it's going down. An auto siphon is a very good thing to have. Uh, makes it much, much easier to get stuff started when you are trying to siphon wine from one vessel into another vessel. Okay, we're almost at the end. Okay, and that's it. We have now transferred our stuff from one carboy, or wine from one carboy to the other, which is down here. And um, one of the things I typically do is try to get every last drop I possibly can out, because, you know, this is wine. Alright. Our next step is going to be to put the sulfite in and to degas. We'll be back for that. Okay, now we're ready to start degassing our Vino Italiano kit. This is the uh, Tuscany Rosso Magnifico kit. And what we have here is our bucket that we've used to uh, mix some sanitizing solution in it a uh, large handle stirrer that is going to be connected to a drill alright so let me get that set up and I'll be right back alright we are going to be taking our drill and putting the stirrer in, this will spread out as it stirs, and here we go. Now the important thing here, again, just like the other kit, is you want to be real careful here because in case there's a lot of gas, um, the effect could be a wine volcano where the wine comes out of the top and goes out all over the floor. So you want to be real careful with how you do this. Also, the warmer your um, wine is, the more it will give up its gas. So we're going to hit this slightly in the beginning and go for it. Alright, so, so far so good. It's important to stir this really well because you want to get all of the gas out that you possibly can. Um, nobody likes a bubbly wine except for if it's supposed to be bubbly. But this Tuscany Rosso Magnifico is supposed to be a nice, dry, and 100% flat, meaning no bubbles wine. So I'm going to hit this again. I just want to say this is also an advantage 
at this point in the winemaking to not have this carboy topped up to the top with wine. Um, if it was, it would be much more difficult to stir out the bubbles. Um, later on, if we were going to bulk age it, we would want it to be topped up. Typically, after we let this sit for a while, I'm going to let it, um, if I was going to bulk age, I'd transfer it to a five gallon carboy if I wasn't going to bottle it. So at this point, I'm just going to keep hitting this and I'm going to pause the tape because you don't need to keep seeing me stir. But there we go. Alright, at this point I've stirred this quite a bit for at least 15 minutes or so. And you might be able to see if I get real close. Some little bubbles coming up. Try to get even closer. Uh, it's hard to see. But these little tiny bubbles coming up from the bottom. Um, you can maybe see them a little bit down here, the crease, close to the crease. See like little bubbles coming up. It might almost look like static on a camera, but it's not static, it's little bubbles coming up. And you see the gas on the top and some foam. We're going to keep stirring, uh, probably for a uh, few more minutes. And try to get as much of that out as we can. Those bubbles. Okay, at this point, we are going to do the stabilizer. The stabilizer is potassium metabisulfite, or sulfate. And uh, the directions say to dissolve this in some water and stir it in. We're going to be just tearing this off pouring it in instead of just putting it in the water just pour it in and with that stir I think it will get plenty mixed up like that You want to incorporate it real good, but you know you can see what, how having this this device on a drill is way better than having a spoon and stirring it. You'll be stirring forever. So I'm going to be doing this for like another five minutes, and I'll be back. Okay, so according to the kit, this is our next step. This clarifying agent right here. You have Kikasol, which you would put in the kit first and mix it in for a couple minutes. And Kytosan, which you would put in next after you've mixed the Kikasol in for a few minutes and put this in. Um, I'm not going to be using this clarifying agent at all. And the reason for that is because Kytosan is a shellfish derivative. And if someone you know or you is allergic to shellfish, this may present a problem for you. Now, I've spoke to wine expert about this and other wine kit companies and they say that the thing that people are allergic to are proteins and there is no protein in Kytosan so therefore you should not have a problem. As far as I'm concerned why take the chance of having a problem? So I'm not going to be using this 
clarifying agent. But if you were going to be using it, you would put the Kika solvent first, stir it up for a few minutes, just like it says in the directions. After you're done, put in the Kytosan. Stir that in for a few minutes. So what are we going to do instead? Well, what are your alternatives? Well, one of your alternatives is you could let your carboy just uh, sit for a few extra months to clear and do a couple of extra rackings. One of the things that I found is this thing called Sparkaloid right here. Sparkaloid powder. And it seems to work pretty good. Um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a tablespoon of that, mix it in with some boiling water, dissolve it, and um, add that that uh, dissolved water to the uh, carboy with the wine and stir that in, in place of the kytosan and kikasol. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to boil up some water, dissolve a tablespoon in this here measuring cup, and we're going to use that in place of the kytosan and kikasol. All right, so I'm going to boil up some water and we'll be right back. All right, so at this point I've added my sparkaloid to this cup, some boiling water, and I'm stirring it. It says here to stir it and let it dissolve for five minutes in this cup before adding it to the carboy. When I get ready to add it to the carboy, I could use a funnel or I could use this glass uh, Pyrex that has a uh, a um, little pouring edge on it. So I'm going to be stirring this for five minutes. Let that dissolve a little bit better. And I'm going to be just one tablespoon into about a cup of water. I'll stir that in. And then I'm going to add it to the wine. Now in the meantime, I'm going to be stirring that some more. See you in a little bit. Alright, so it's time to add the sparkaloid to the wine. Which is what I just done. And I'm going to stir that in. Now, we've been stirring here for a good half hour, if not more, with this grill. You can imagine what this would be like with a spoon. A long-handled spoon, like the directions tell you. Forget about it. So I'm going to stir that in a bit. stir this a little bit more and I'm going to put the top back on this top back on I'm going to actually re-sterilize everything here first put it back on and we're going to let this carboy sit with this wine in it for um, probably about 10 days before we rack out of this carboy into something else um, when we do that, we're going to leave the sediment behind on the bottom 
of the carboy. And this is typically what we do every time we rack uh, is leave the sediment behind with the carboy. All right, so there we have it. I'm going to stir a little bit more, put the top on, and put it aside. The next step, uh, stay tuned for the next step, and uh, take it from there. And so we get in real close now to drinking some great wine. Please visit my blog, www.cookingitalianrecipes.com, uh, for more Italian recipes and more tips on winemaking and gardening and other stuff. Also, please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to keep posted on what I'm up to. Thanks for watching and have an awesome day.